Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to show you the most basic way to deploy your React application so that other people can access it on an actual website. As you can see here, I've built just a very simple rendition of the Create React app, which pretty much just promotes my YouTube series. And we're going to try and get that to anthonysistilli.ca, which as you can see, is currently returning nothing. The technology we are going to be using is going to be AWS Amplify as well as AWS's route. 53. And if you're not familiar with AWS, don't worry. All you have to do is create an account and follow along. I'm going to take it step by step as if you've never used AWS before. And if you find value in this video, please consider leaving a comment, um, subscribing to the channel. I can't tell you how much it helps with the YouTube algorithm. And I love hearing your suggestions and interacting with you guys. So thank you so much for all the support. And let's just jump straight into it. So the first thing you're going to do once you create an AWS account is we're going to use something called Route 53, and that is going to be used to actually buy our domain uh, that we want to host our website on. If you already have a domain, there are ways that you can create what's called a hosted zone in Route 53 that will allow you to point your domain wherever you currently bought it from, whether it's GoDaddy or Namecheap, to AWS so you could use it as if it was AWS. And all we have to do once we click on route 53 from the search bar is go ahead and click register domain so I can go ahead and choose whatever domain I want so for example I want Anthony .ca. so I'm gonna scroll down and find the .ca section I'm gonna type in the domain name and click check and it should be obviously free I don't think anyone would have gotten it in the time from when I checked to when I started this video we're gonna go ahead and click add to cart and then once we've added to cart we can scroll down click continue and then we can just go ahead and fill in all our information note that all of this information will be public on who is so you want to make sure that you input stuff that you're not afraid of other people finding it's also worth noting that you can get domain privacy using AWS for .ca domains like the one I just registered. It's not available, but for the .com ones, you can. And some um, registrars like to charge a bit extra for this feature. Um, I can't remember whether or not AWS does, but I'm sure if you went through this process, you'll see the option at the very bottom uh, and it'll let you know. So once you've gone ahead and registered it, it might take a bit to actually get registered. So we're going to leave that there. And while this is getting ready, let's go ahead and walk through the setup you need for your React application and how it sort of works on the back end. So I have my React application here and I'm just running it locally from, you know, my terminal and create React app. Now, the cool thing about deploying React applications is you don't actually need a live server to do it. In fact, any front end of a website that you've seen most likely is running from a minified JavaScript file called a bundle.js that is pretty much loading everything on the client side, aka the browser that acts as the server that runs that JavaScript code. Now, in contrast, when you want to host a backend, it is the opposite. For a backend that is listening for API requests being made to it, you actually have to host that on its own separate servers. And that's where you've probably seen features like EC2s for AWS coming in handy. And that's where you would um, get into things like load balancers. But for a basic React application, all you have to do is host that bundle.js somewhere that the browser can access and render on its own, and you don't actually have to keep a server running, which makes hosting React applications um, very cost effective. Um, and one of the ways that we can do that is through a service called AWS Amplify. Now, AWS Amplify is somewhat new, and what they've done is they've stuck together a bunch of other AWS functionalities and features that you would normally use to host a simple front-end application, and they've sort of made one easy-to-use solution. So it is by far, in my opinion, from everything that I've used to host a React application, the easiest and most straightforward way to do it. And all you really need is a React application pushed up to whatever um, source control you use. So for example, I personally love using GitLab. I find it's really good when you start getting into things like pipelines um, and and a lot of pipeline automation for things, um, especially when it comes to the DevOps side of things. So I personally really enjoy GitLab over GitHub. You can still use GitHub if you prefer, and it'll be really easy to link it. So let's go through that process. I've gone ahead and I've already um, 
created my repository with the code I just showed you. And if you want a basic demo of what's going to happen on the sort of backend when uh, the server actually hosts it, what happens is if you write npm run build, it'll actually build that bundle.js. And that bundle.js, you'll be able to go ahead and, um, you know, whenever you put it into a browser or you serve it up on a browser, it'll be able to do it. And you'll see here that there's already a built-in solution called serve s and build where you can pass in your build a folder with all the files it needs into it. And if I type serve slash s build, you will see that it's going to start running on localhost 5000. I come over to localhost 5000, I'll refresh it, and you can see our application is running here. And it's not running through npm run start, but it's actually running through serving the build file, which also means if you're running this locally and you change the code, the refreshes, the hot refreshes aren't gonna happen because this is being served statically through a single file. Anyways, that's just a helpful little thing uh, to get you up to speed with what's happening. But let's get back to our repository. We have our repository here connected to our GitLab. I'm going to come into AWS. I typed in Amplify and I clicked on it and we're going to go ahead and click get started. So all we're going to do is we're going to click host your web app. As you can see, it hosts vanilla. It uh, also supports, you know, native JavaScript, uh, Vue, and also React. If you wanted to create an app backend, you can also do so using AWS Conf uh, uh, AWS Amplify, um, you know, backends for Android and Apple um, iOS apps. I've never personally used this, so I can't attest to whether it's good or not, but I do, however, like this one. So now when you click host your web app, you can simply click on wherever you have your code hosted and actually just integrate the repository as easily as that. So I'm going to go ahead and click GitLab. It's probably going to ask me to authenticate my GitLab account. Oh, I guess because I'm already logged into GitLab on another tab, it might have got... Um, uh, the cookies from there and I can go ahead and select the repository that I want and also the branch now this is really good because a lot of the time when you're making you know a actual application for a client and whatnot you're not just gonna have one environment on the master branch that has the running site you might also have a develop branch if you follow Gitflow, um, where you push all your code that's not ready to go into production because you still want to test it but you still want it to be live so you push all your code to a develop branch and using AWS Amplify, you can also create an environment, a separate environment for your development site as well as your actual site. So, you know, you test things locally and it works and then you push it up to GitLab and it'll automatically, if you pushed it up to the development branch, push that code onto your develop.anthonysistilli.ca um, website, for example. You can make the um, subdomain whatever you want. For now, we're just going to keep it simple and have it uh, just one branch and one site and we'll have that site connected to master. So let's go ahead and click next and we can see here it's sort of giving us essentially just the basics of what it's doing in terms of every time uh, it tries to deploy. You don't have to worry too much about this. Just know that essentially what's happening in the background is it's running that npm run build, it's getting that build file and it's hosting it on its own um, static site. So we can just go ahead, click save and deploy and and we can give it some time. Now, we haven't connected our domain because it is still being registered. So that's not a problem because it'll automatically create its own AWS Amplify URL that you can access and see. So as we can see right now, it's still setting up. So it might take around uh, three to five minutes the first time that you create it, like we just did, um, to actually go ahead and build it. It has to set up things like a AWS bucket to actually store the code. It uses, I believe, CloudFront as well to make it so that if people access your site from different areas, it will cache it. So it's not, you know, for example, if someone's accessing your site from Hong Kong, it will create a node in Hong Kong, an AWS node in Hong Kong, Hong Kong, for example, where it stores the cached version of your site um, and it will go ahead and uh, when someone uh, someone else gets it from Hong Kong, it will it will uh, send the files that were stored on the Hong Kong servers to minimize the actual load time. So AWS Amplify is really well done and really thought out. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and wait for this to go ahead and finish um, creating. All right, so that didn't take long at all. Actually, as soon as I paused the video, it pretty much completed. So you can see here, it's already uh, finished doing everything. And it, you can see here, it's created a URL where I can go and access the site. So if I were to go and click on that, bam, here is my website. I can send this to anyone I want. It's publicly accessible. And um, 
I believe in terms of costs that if you set up a new AWS account, they give you a bunch of hours for a bunch of their different services for free for the first year. And I think with just a basic React application, you'll never actually go over that allocated free um, usage for a month. So pretty much if all you're trying to do is host a website for like a hackathon or something uh, simple, uh, you could pretty much host it for free using AWS Amplify and just keep it up and running. So now that we have it updated, let's go ahead and see what it looks like when I actually change the code or something. So I'm going to go into the code and you can see here, if I go to the website, it just says a YouTube series to learn React.js. I'm going to go ahead and change something like adding a happy face here. And all you need to do in order for it to propagate any changes you make to your repository is simply commit it up to your Git. So I'm going to do a get add, I'm going to do a get commit, like add a smiley, and I'm going to push it. So as soon as I push it, it actually uses GitLab's webhooks to know that the repository and the code has changed. And you can see here, it even just instantly started reprovisioning and going through the entire flow again to deploy the new version. Now, this might take, a, you know, around a small amount, probably faster than what it took the first time to rebuild it. But you'll see, um, and also it does it in a smart way where it doesn't take down the site while it's updating or anything like that. Um, it's still pointing, you know, to the old version of the site until everything is completely done and completely ready. This might take another 20 seconds. So while we're waiting on that, let's go ahead and check on our domain. We can see here, okay, so it looks like we have a hosted zone and it looks like everything was created successfully. So we should be okay to go ahead and connect our domain to our website now. So while this is building, we can go ahead and click into master. And while we're in here, oh, actually you don't even have to go in there. We can click over here, domain management on app settings. Let me zoom in so it might be a bit easier. And you can see here that right now it is just pointing this URL that it automatically created for us to the master branch. Let's go ahead and click add domain and we can choose from the available domains on route 53 and hosted zones that we have. So let's go ahead and click that. Let's click configure domain. And we can see here, we can go ahead and choose what we want to post uh, to point to where. So for example, if someone just goes to, you know, anthonysistilly.ca, we can choose what branch we want to go to. And also if they go to www anthony uh, we can also choose what we want it to point through now here is where for example if we had a master branch we could go ahead or, or sorry if we had a developer branch we could go ahead uh, type in develop for the subdomain we wanted and go ahead and add um, our branch you know if we had that develop branch we could point to it and in fact it probably won't take too much time to actually do so let's just go ahead and do that so i'm going to do a git checkout dash b develop and this is going to create a new branch called develop and i'm going to go ahead and say youtube series uh to learn react.js and i'm going to say this is the develop and i'm going to go ahead and save that i'm going to get add oops uh push up develop oops we're going to do a get push oh we're going to go ahead and uh add the develop branch Sometimes on Windows, it doesn't copy properly. I like to just copy and paste that. Uh, oops. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. No idea what just happened there. <laughs> Let's go ahead and reopen Git Pass. Uh, and we're going to... Let's see, what did it end up copying? Okay, no wonder. So if we try to do a git push, we're gonna go ahead and just copy this. Let's see, does it copy properly this time? Perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and paste that in. And you can see we have pushed it up, all of that to avoid some typing. But now um, we might have to refresh this page so it gets the new branch. So let's go ahead and do that again, configure domain. Um, and we can go ahead and click develop. And okay, it looks like it still hasn't gotten the change that we added a new branch yet. Um, so, oh, let's go ahead and click connect branch. That was probably it. Um, there we go. We can go ahead and click develop, save and deploy. And now that we've connected the develop branch, we can go back into domain management. We can click add domain, do everything we did before. Click uh, add one for develop and bam. Over here, we click save. And now it's going to go ahead and create that. So 
it's going to take a bit of time, but it'll automatically create a free SSL for you to use as well. And if you're not sure what that is, that just means if someone goes to your site, you get the little lock sign over here and it's an HTTPS as opposed to just the HTTP, which a lot of people um, won't give their personal information or browse on HTTP sites alone because it doesn't uh, add as much. There's a whole bunch of security that goes on uh, behind the scenes for it that we're not going to get extremely into. But um, yeah, so this might take a little while to, while to go ahead and do the SSL creation and configure everything. But once this is done, we should be able to access our site in three different ways. Number one, through just this with no subdomain. Number two, with the www dot, uh, subdomain, both of which will point to the master branch. And number three, with the dot .develop. Um, that will point to the develop branch. So I'm gonna pause it here and wait for this to complete. Okay, so that took around 25 minutes, but it eventually did end up getting set up. And if we come to the site, anthonysistilli.ca, we go ahead and refresh it, we can see that our main site um, is here. And if I go ahead and replace that www with develop, it should work, bam. Now we have access to the develop environment. And that is pretty much it. You've just learned how to host and set up your own, very own React application on your very own website. Perfect for, you know, your first web application project. If you're making like a cover page for yourself or like a resume site or anything like that, you go ahead and do this method, keep it up there and host it pretty much for free free if I remember correctly. But yeah, that is it. And if you found value in this video, please consider leaving a comment, liking, subscribing. Anything helps so much with the YouTube algorithm to get these videos out there to more people so I can keep going ahead and making these videos. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're all staying safe and I'll see you guys in the next video.